Um, I was going to talk about a bit about Capel, not assuming that you know us. Um, so we're London's uh, leading specialist college for um, environmental education and training. There are six campuses across London. We have about three and a half thousand students. About a thousand of those are under 19 and the rest of them are a little bit older like me. Um, so, but all our students share one thing in common. They're all studying something to do with the land, the nature and the environment in some shape or form. So there's a whole range of courses from entry level to degree level. Um, and students come to us and they will get all of the knowledge and the academic skills that they need. But we believe in giving the students um, practical skills and practical skills in a real world setting. And I, I personally, I think, you know, um, being able to put it into practice is really the best way of learning something. And for me, um, the practical side of things is the glue that binds everything else together or the knowledge together. Um, but it's not just about vocational training for Capel. Um, I tend to use the phrase um, that we grow people. Um, so the qualifications are important, but for us, it's equally important that we have students graduating with the uh, personal confidence to put things into practice. They need to be articulate. They need to be able to communicate their ideas. They need to work in with teams. They need to work with the public and so on. They need to be resilient, especially in this, this age. So Capel Enfield um, is, the, um, is our biggest and it's the oldest campus of the six. And in many ways, it's our home campus. Started in 58 um, and it now houses around half that total number of students, so about 1,500 um, and um, around about 200 staff. The college is also um, blessed with um, the gardens, there's 34 acres that are open to the public. Um, some of you may have been into the gardens or visited one of our many events and so on. And we also operate um, Forty Hall Farm and the market garden there and the vineyard there. And, and one for Robert, uh, we are planning to do beavers. So, um, so if you put those two things together, I mean, you, hopefully you can see that Cable doesn't just teach about the, the natural environment. We, we own it, manage it, and operate commercial activities relating to it. Um, and, and that all can be done successfully. In fact, it's best done successfully together. So I was going to touch on just very, very briefly on climate change, because it's a big topic for us, mainly because many of our students will be inheriting responsibility for, for the planet, or at least bits of it. Um, and we know all about climate change. It's about uh, global warming, and we're trying to limit the, the increases to two degrees or something below that. Um, we're going for the net zero targets 2050 or 2030, depending on who you are. Um, but one of the things for me is that climate change is going to bring turbulence and, and less predictability in terms of our weather. We know there'll be sea level rises as increased rainfall or decreased rainfall, depending on where you are. There are knock-on effects to air quality and flood risk and so on. And all of that is going to be disrupting to wildlife, you know, migration patterns, flowering times for plants, disruptions to marine flora and so on. So in many ways, I mean, although it's climate change, for me, I actually see it as environmental change. Um, and, and that's really important. But there's another thing that's going on in the world. We're seeing rising populations, especially in cities and metropolitan areas. And that's bringing its own challenges from food security and increased um, food poverty. We saw that from um, Edible London earlier. And I think there are special, uh, special challenges for actually delivering to people good food. So we've also got a, a more mobile global, global population and, and it's a more diverse population. I'm really proud that London's 60% mixed ethnicities. That's terrific. But again, all of these bring, you know, greater and greater demands for food um, and, and people want more food choices as well. And I'll say especially good food. So this leads to pressure on traditional farmers, um, you know, like uh, Robin and Lane. And it also occasionally can lead to greater pressure on the land. And when you think about the combined effects of the climate and the environment, along with the changing fire practice and deforestation and things, it's all meant there's been a, a dramatic declining biodiversity. And I personally think that's bad for people's enjoyment of life. Um, but it's also bad for the, the natural balance there is in nature that we need to, that we need to maintain. And, and, and it's easily lost. Nature takes a little bit of time. We've talked about this in terms of reparting. But nature is relatively slow. She will repair herself. But I mean, she's relatively slow to do that compared to the, the rapid change of man-made changes. So when I think about Capel, um, you know, and we start to plan our curriculum, I mean, we think in slightly different terms, really. So what we know that we need is rather than talking about the curriculum, we know we need people that actually understand the natural world and how it works. Um, 
uh, it's a fascinating and, and very complex place. So we need people that understand that. But we also need people that can actually make a difference both through their practical skills. So we need people, you know, for example, that can climb and maintain trees. Uh, you know, without trees, the city's going to warm. We need trees and the, the urban forest to cool us. So we need people with those skill sets. We need people to plant and maintain hedges. It was brilliant to hear about the Haywards, uh, five kilometres of the hedges. So they're terrific, um, you know, uh, stock shields, barriers, and wildlife corridors, all the like. We need people with veterinary skills to administer to those, you know, the sick animals, especially the ones chased by dogs. Uh, we need people with laboratory skills to analyse soil samples. We need people with surveying and so on. You know, maybe even flying drones over land to, to survey that way. So you, you can see there's a whole range of things we need, um, you know, from people um, you know, coming in to look after the natural world. But we also need creative people that can innovate because they're the ones that are going to find new ways of producing good food, especially close to where people want to buy it and eat it. So these are people that will understand how to use their various growing technologies and lights, you know, light technology and hydroponics and so on to perhaps supplement their traditional ways of producing food. We also need to, people that can understand business as well as uh, in, uh, in the environment because it's all about a sustainable businesses. And we, again, we saw that from the Haywards earlier. So we need people looking after land. Um, you know, looking after land is a, is a long-term commitment. You can't have people dipping in and out um, and doubling around. So, so the businesses or the, or, the, or the models they set up need to be sustainable financially um, as well as um, ecologically. Um, and I think, you know, uh, we do run 40 Hall Farm, and I think it's a good model. Um, it was very interesting to hear from uh, Robin and Elaine earlier. Um, 40 Hall Farm for us is, is a good example of how you can do a sustainable, um, low-impact business model um, on the land. It does minutes, include uh, minutes, production. Welcome. Thank you. It does include production, but it also includes public visiting and, and um, you know, uh, rare breeds. People, people come and see those families and so on. So it is a sort of diverse model. Um, and I was talking about what, what sort of people we need graduating from the college. Well, the last thing for me is we need thoroughly passionate people. Um, I've worked on the land myself. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lovely job, but it's a tough job at times. And it's vital that we get people with the passion that we need. So I haven't listed all the courses that we teach at CAPEL. I think that's easy to check on our website. And, and the reason I've done that is, is, is for me, it's more about the culture and intent. So courses and qualifications can always be written and we should write them to need fit what we need to do for the future. So but for what we need most is people that need that want to learn um, and, and want to go, go out into the world and make a difference. So, you know, and colleges like Cable, you know, can just give them the opportunity to go and do that. Thank you.